Firstly, a big thank you to MSI for sponsoring our trip to Computex 2019. Please check out their range of Intel-based motherboards via the link in the video description. Also, thank you to Corsair for their support. Please check all their exciting products out via the link in the video description. Welcome back to Harbour Unboxed. We are at the Gigabyte Aorus booth today, and we're mostly interested in their X570 range of motherboards because they look absolutely incredible. Probably the best looking X570 boards that we've come across yet. The VRMs on these boards are just phenomenal. We'll dive into those in a minute and give you all the details. They've also got proper cooling on them, which is great to see. And yeah, we're just really keen to check these boards out. So we'll go do that now. But before we get into Gigabyte's impressive looking range of X570 motherboards, I just wanted to quickly address this X499 leak. It was reported that Gigabyte accidentally leaked Intel's upcoming X499 chipset with their Extreme Water Force motherboard, which is clearly labeled as an X499 board. It sounds like Intel was looking to refresh their LGA2066 platform by renaming the X299 chipset to X499. And this would make way for their upcoming third gen Core X HEDT lineup. But it seems like Intel might have thought better of that now and they're just sticking with x299 at least for now gigabyte said the x499 naming was a placeholder since intel only updated board partners very recently gigabyte has now gone with x299g the g at the end indicates that these are new boards for 2019 and that makes them a little easier to differentiate from existing x299 parts it's still the same old x299 chipset though so no changes there anyway the x299g aorus extreme water force is a super impressive looking motherboard sadly though i doubt intel's 14 nanometer plus plus cascade lake x processors will be as exciting Moving on, a few months ago, Infineon announced the first true 1000 amp voltage regulator, also the industry's first 16-phase digital PWM multi-phase controller, codenamed XDPE132G5C. This 16-phase controller is designed to be paired with the TDA2147570 amp power stages, and I believe this is exactly what Gigabyte has done, giving their flagship board, the X570 Aorus Extreme, a current capacity of 1,120 20 amps under optimal conditions. This means Gigabyte is able to offer a 16 phase motherboard without having to use doublers and amusingly their spec sheet says and definitely not parallel. Clearly that's a shot at ASUS and their doubled up design that features 16 power stages teamed up in pairs to make an 8 phase VRM. ASUS claims this improves transient response time as they don't use doublers, but that argument kind of goes right out the window when your competitor offers a 14 plus 2 phase VRM without the need for doublers. Gigabyte also claims that the Aorus Extreme is the most efficient X570 board on the market, and with their real finned heat sinks, they say it'll run nice and cool, and honestly, we don't doubt any of that. But of course, I also can't wait to test a huge range of X570 motherboards. Before moving on, I should just quickly note that the Aorus Extreme comes with a nano carbon base plate, three PCIe 4.0 M.2 slots with thermal guards, Wi-Fi 6, 10 gigabit ethernet, and this is a passively cooled board. So. It's the only X570 board that we know of that doesn't require a fan to cool the chipset. That's quite impressive though, not entirely surprising though, given the amount of aluminium on this thing. It's heavier than a cinder block. Then, second in command, Gigabyte has the X570 Aorus Master, and this model features a 14 phase VRM using the same Infineon PWM. It's a 12 plus 2 configuration using 50 amp power stages. This model also features proper finned heat sinks over the VRM components, and there's also a huge array of features such as 3M.2 slots, Wi Fi 6, Bluetooth 5, and 2.5 gigabit Ethernet. It's another great looking board that'll have no issue overclocking something like the Ryzen 9 processors to the max. Gigabyte also used a 12 plus 2 phase VRM configuration for the Aorus Ultra and Pro versions. Then there's the Elite, which also features a 12 plus 2 VRM, though I believe there is a component change here as it is the most affordable Aorus X570 motherboard. Then lastly, we checked out the X570 i Aorus Pro Wi Fi, and this cute little guy is a mini ITX motherboard with a VRM that puts most high-end X470 motherboards to shame. I'm not even joking about that. It packs a 6 plus 2 phase IR VRM with a nice big heatsink, though this time we don't get real fins. Still, you'll have no issues with a 105 watt part in this board, and I imagine you'll even be able to overclock the snot out of it. The board also packs a pair of M.2 slots, Wi-Fi 6, and active cooling on the chipset heatsink. Overall, it looks to be a great little board, and I reckon there's a good chance Tim and myself may upgrade our Computex editing rigs next year with a pair of these and, of course, some Ryzen 9 processors.
Moving on, Gigabyte also had some nice looking storage devices on show. The Aorus M.2 NVMe PCIe 4.0 SSD is a slick looking drive and it features a full body copper heat spreader for enhanced cooling. Naturally, it utilizes the Fires and PS5016 E16 controller, and this enables PCIe 4.0 support, but it also uses Toshiba's 3D TLC NAND flash, and it's available in 500GB, 1TB, and 2TB capacities. Gigabyte's claiming read speeds of 5GB per second and write speeds of 4.4GB per second. However, the storage device that really caught our attention was the Aorus Master M.2G4. This is a PCIe 4.0x4 expansion card that supports four M.2 SSDs for a sequential read and write speeds of around 15 gigabytes per second when configured in RAID 0. The SSDs are cooled via double-sided thermal pads that are attached to direct touch heat pipes along with an active fan. It's a drill-worthy product that would be a dream for content creation or basically any workload that can take advantage of insanely fast storage. Needless to say, it's at the top of my shopping list or my wish list and I hope I get the opportunity to test it out with some Ryzen 3000 series processors. Okay, so that concludes our tour of the Gigabyte Aorus booth. Hope you guys enjoyed those motherboards and I'm keen to see what you guys think or keen to hear what you guys think about those massive VRMs on all those X570 motherboards. Anyway, thanks for watching. Remember to subscribe, like, and I'll see you again next time.